Hello again, I thought I would finally do a collection video as some people said they would be interested in seeing a collection video and that's something I myself am quite interested in watching. I quite like Swiss Army Knife collections and traditional collections and all that sort of thing so here's, you know, here's um, my Boker Plus collection and the figure now would be a good time since we're all in quarantine so there's a lot more people sitting around just watching YouTube so this is my Boker Plus collection so in no particular order I'll just start right here this is the and by the way these are pretty much all Boker Plus except one which is that little sheath knife over there but we'll get to that shortly I thought that should be thrown in there and um, these folders here uh, all of these excluding that one these six knives here these are all made by Boker Plus unfortunately I don't have any real Bokers um, as far as I'm aware, Boker has three brands under them. There's just Boker, which is made in Germany, Boker Plus, which are these. I believe these are all made in Taiwan, but I think they're still, I think they're still designed in Germany. I might be wrong about that. I think there's a lot of American influence in there though, and you've also got Magnum by Boker, which are made in China, I believe. So if you want the good stuff, Boker. If you want something, sort of budget. Boker Plus, if you want something even more budget, I suppose Magnum by Boker is the best way I can categorise it. That said, this wasn't exactly cheap. I mean, it wasn't expensive either. Um, I'll, I'll get to that later on. That's, that, this one here is Magnum by Boker. I've only got one of those. Uh, so I just thought I'd throw it in there. So I'll start off with... This is the Boker Plus XS, and um, by the way, all these folding knives are legal to carry in the UK because they've got a cutting edge of less than 3 inches and they're non-locking. That'll apply to pretty much all of Europe. It should be fine to carry these, as well as pretty much every country in the world, as far as I'm aware. So this is the XS, which is a good little folding pocket knife. Now, it's, it may be worth to note that they've actually designed this knife so you can take this thumb stud off. So you can carry it in countries where they don't allow you to carry a one-handed a one-handed opening knife. What countries that apply to, I do not know, but it is currently legal to carry a knife that has one-handed opening in the UK. But remember, it's not allowed to be a lock knife, nor can that cutting edge be over three inches. Now this is my first ever proper folding knife, I would say. What I mean by that is a folding knife that's not part of a multi tool. So it's not a Swiss Army knife, it's not a Leatherman, it's just a standard um standalone pocket knife this is a good option for a first pocket knife if you don't know what to get because it's reasonably well made it's pretty safe um left or right handed carry although it is just tip up only you can take that thumb stud off now i actually thought that you could move the position of that thumb stud because there's those two other holes those two other holes are actually smaller than, than the hole where the thumb stud is Bocker does supply an, an allen key to take that uh, thumb stud off or switch around the pocket clip as well as take the knife apart for maintenance. I have done that before uh, just to see what it looks like inside there. So they're, they're fairly well made. Like I said, as far as I'm aware, made in China, 440c steel. Um, I've just realised because of the setting I'm on, I can't actually adjust the focus. But there you go, Bocker Plus XS, great little pocket knife. And they also now do these in OD Green with a satin blade. Moving on. I'm just going to do these in no particular order. This is my latest uh, knife purchase. I've only had this a couple of weeks. Um, this is the Boker Plus Rocket uh, Heine Haynes Edition. Now, what makes this the Heine Haynes Edition is, well, it's red. It's got the Heine red. And it's also, I'm sure it's got the Heine H on it right there. So you can see the Heine Haynes logo, but not only that, more importantly, it's a ball joint. Some of you will just call that a slip joint. I'm not entirely sure what the correct terminology is, but it's not really a slip joint. I mean, to me, this is a slip joint where the spring is there. This one is essentially a frame lock, but that bar extends a bit past the blade, so it doesn't actually lock, and it's got a little ball detent, which is why I call it a ball joint. It does have a half stop. I don't think this one does, does it? Uh, yeah, it does. And obviously, that's got the, th the finger trial, which makes it really safe to safe to hold. That just goes to show you why uh, knife laws regarding lock knives are rather silly. 
This is a great little friendly carry. I mean, this is extremely non-threatening and it is a nice looking little knife. Um, it definitely is a tiny little thing. But it is incredibly well made. Uh, it didn't come with a key ring. I put it on there myself so I could wear it around my neck if I so wish. Which I think that's the purpose of such a small knife anyway. And of course this would go nicely on a set of keys. Um, I'm not going to say too much about this knife because I've not actually done a video on it yet. But um, I will say, my god, that thing came razor sharp, which is really nice for a knife that only costs 20 quid. Moving on. Boker Plus Worldwide. Now, this is an absolute tank of a knife. This thing is a behemoth for a UK legal. Uh, this thing is, in terms of size, it's pretty much on par with a landscape world legal. But this is built so much better. Um, and like I said, I think these are designed in Germany. Now, if it's got anything to do with the Germans, you usually can't go wrong. Um, Germany's got a reputation for a good engineering for a reason. And even if it's not made in Germany, well, you know what I'm getting at there. Um, so this is quite a heavy knife for a UK legal. It sort of, it reminds me a lot of the Kukri. If you have a look at that blade shape, you can see why you've got that recurve there. Um, and then that sort of drop point, which is quite nice. I mean, I've never actually found a practical use for this knife. I'm sure many of you have. I've never even carried that because it's so big. And I can't think of a situation where I could use this outside um, for any practical reason. I mean, you're not going to use this out on the street because it's too big. It's going to scare someone, obviously. And... I'm, you know what I'm trying to say, and if it was the case of, well, I'm going to the woods, well, if you're going to the woods, I would like to think you'd be okay with a lock knife, I suppose it depends on the con on the context, I mean, if I was going camping, for example, I probably wouldn't take this, that's just me, that said, I am very glad that I could legally carry this if I want to, and maybe someday I will, but that is the Boker Plus Worldwide, OS8 steel, I think. I can't quite see on the camera. Yeah, OS8. Um, tip up or tip down, left or right handed carry. I don't think there's G10 scale, it's just plastic, honestly. Hollow ground. Very stiff. And a very strong half stop. I mean, you can hear that, that snap there. Um, that said, you could see there, hopefully. Uh, again, because of the camera settings, I can't really adjust the the focus. Um, but it's got a chip in the blade from hitting the screw um, in there, so there's not really much you could do about that. Um, I personally don't care too much. I mean, it's a 30 quid knife anyway. Um, and this did come razor sharp. Moving on. Uh, this is one that I really need to do a video on. This is the Boker Plus Tech Tool. This is the number 7, outdoors. This is one of those things where they first came out, when they first came out, the knife and molten tool community went absolutely nuts, saying that Boker basically redesigned the Swiss Army knife and modernised it. Uh, yeah, I absolutely agree. This is pretty much a modern Swiss Army knife. I mean, if you could, if you compare this to a Victorinox, they're pretty much a carbon copy. I mean, let me see. Where's the... There. That bottle opener is pretty much 100% identical to Victorinox. Um, I'm pretty sure... I can't quite see because of the... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that um, that saw is pretty much exactly the same as well. Of course, the handle is extremely different. You've got those G uh, G10 there, and you've got a pocket clip, which Victorinox does not have. Um, this only has one blade, one knife blade which is a hollow ground drop point, which is quite nice. Now, I really do like that blade shape. Um, it's a bit more aggressive. It's, I think you can get more work done with that over a Victorinox, but me personally, I'm a bit of a, Vic a Victorinox fanboy, I must say. I really enjoy a good Swiss Army knife. That said, this is a valued piece of my collection. Now, these should usually be about £45. At the time I got this, I paid £25 because Heine was having a sale. Um... That was about two years ago, so it's long past, but still, um, even at £45, that's not a bad price. That said, it's made in Taiwan, for £45 you could get a Swiss made knife, and well, 
like the Germans, the Swiss have got a reputation for their engineering as well. Um, then again, this is made, this is designed in Germany, as far as I'm aware. Um, I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, either way, definitely a great knife to have, and this is very outdoorsy orientated, especially with the tool set. Like I said, this is a number seven. You can get whatever one you want. I think it goes from one through eight. I think the one above this um, adds a Phillips screwdriver and a pair of pliers. The ones below this, you're just reducing tools. I think the one below this um, removes the saw, and the one below that removes the saw and the scissors. I'm not going to go through each and every implement on this. It was just, you know, as a collection video, so we're not going to go through every little detail. Um, Bokor Plus Subcom Titanium with a clip point blade. Now then, I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with this knife, which I didn't really expect to have. This is one of those knives that I've been after since I first started collecting knives. This is one of those knives where I wanted, I was going to get them alongside this one. I never did. I mean, I've had this thing for about five or so years, probably longer. This I only got last year. Um, I paid, I want to say I paid about 35 for this, they're over 50 usually, I got it when it was on sale on Heine. I would not be impressed if I paid over £50 for this knife because the quality just is not there I, I, in my opinion. I mean the titanium, I thought the point of buying titanium was it doesn't scratch as easily as steel, this thing is a scratch magnet. You could, if you threw this in with your keys or some coins, it is going to get scratched. Big time, which, if I'm buying titanium, I don't want it to get scratched. Um, 440c steel, I'm pretty sure on Heine it says it was OS 8. Then again, I'm not a steel Nazi, so I'm not entirely bothered. But uh, it would be nice to get what you pay for. Um, it's, a, it's a good little knife, it's not too threatening, it's fairly safe to hold, I mean... It's got that finger trial so it won't close on you. It does have a half stop for whatever that's worth, but if it gets to the point where you need to use that half stop, well, you've got bigger problems. I mean, you've kind of got a bit of a gate in there, don't you? Um, fairly easy to open with one hand after you get used to it for a while. Um, tip up or tip down, right-handed only. Uh, I do not like this clip. When I got this clip, it was so stiff, I just could not use it. I had to use a screwdriver on a Swiss Army knife, in fact, it's pretty much the exact same screwdriver as this. Uh, it was just one of these I used to sort of get under there and pry it to, to loosen it off. I just basically did this uh, and left it overnight, and that helped. Now, I was buying this thinking, this is a, this is a nice little... A little knife that I don't have to put in my pocket. I could just let that sit on my belt. It'll be hidden by my t-shirt and no one will notice and hopefully be fairly comfortable. Nope. Didn't quite work out like that because, like I said, that, that spring is way too stiff and uh, just scratches up the, the belt. So, uh, difficult to get on and off and it's scratching up my belt. So, I think that's a no-go. Not to mention it jabs my side so it's not really comfortable either. So, I've not really been carrying this. And you can kind of argue that's a deep carry clip, but to me, I mean, that is a bit much out of the pocket. I don't like it when knives show a lot of the pocket because I don't want people knowing I've got a knife in my pocket because I've never had any issues with uh, anyone noticing I've got a knife, but I just, I want to avoid that situation where someone's getting scared and phoning the police because the last thing I want is um, me being in the middle of the shop um, with the police suddenly pointing an MP5 at my face. That doesn't really sound like a good day. And uh, the last Boker Plus knife that I've got here is the SOCOM Friction Folder, which is basically the SOCOM Titanium's uh, cousin, if you like. This is designed as a neck knife, as you can clearly see here, with this plastic sheath, um, which I quite like that. That's one of the things that drew me to it, was it was a neck knife with that, with that sheath. I quite like that designer sheath. Yeah, that design sheath. Um, handle's not quite so nice. We've got this plastic. It's not G10, FRN probably. Um, this is a friction folder, a friction folder version, essentially of that same knife with a spear point blade. This is probably one of the safest knives you could buy. 
um, and carry in the UK because you've got that finger trial. This one's also a ball joint. I forgot to mention that, um, like the Boca Plus Rocket, this is also a ball joint. And again, this is essentially just a frame lock where um, it actually doesn't lock that. That lock just extends past the tang of the blade and has a ball, whoops, has a ball detent holding it open. Same thing with this, but it's also a friction folder. And the majority of your thumb covers it, so there's no way in hell are you going to close that on yourself. So that's definitely a worthwhile option, and both of those knives will fit quite nicely in the fifth pocket of your jeans. Now, I don't put them there because that's where I keep my Zippo. Um, by the way, sometime soon after this video, I'm planning on doing a Zippo collection. I think I've got something like 30 Zippos. I could be wrong, I've not counted in a while. I've been collecting those since I was like 18, so I've got quite a, quite a few. So this is definitely a, a worthwhile knife checking out. It doesn't have a pocket clip, nor does it have any way to accommodate a pocket clip. Um, you've got the same, the same mechanism right there. No half stop um that said the standard price on this is a lot cheaper you can you can have these for about 32 pounds of a heine which i think is a pretty good value some people have been complaining about blade rub i've noticed that my one's been venturing off to the side just a little bit but i've not had any blade rub on this uh, yet thankfully and uh i forgot to mention also it fits quite well in your wallet at least it does in my wallet. I've just got a standard bifold wallet and um, it fits in there pretty well actually. Although it makes it a bit too heavy for my liking. Um, final thoughts on this knife is I do not like carrying it around my neck because it's way too heavy. And uh, if I do carry it around my neck, I'd rather this side be towards my skin because, well, that's a piece of steel. That's cold. For me, that's a big off-putting thing for carrying a knife around my neck. Now before I get into that last knife right there, I just want to show you this. I've not yet opened it, I'm planning on doing so soon. Um, this appeared on Heine about three weeks ago and I thought, well I've got to have that, it's only four quid, I'll, I'll get that from my badge collection. I've not even opened it yet. I'll do that now. I've been actually saving it for this video before I put it up. Uh, you know those Spyderco knife rolls? Um, I think I think it's either 18 or 32 knives. I've got one of those, one of the smaller ones. I've got on my wall with some of my pocket knives. Well, I've got a small badge collection there too, so I thought I'd get this, um, this for the badge collection. So this is just Boker's logo essentially, um, with their with their date on it essentially 1869 to 2019. So it's basically their 150th 150th anniversary. I know you can't see that. I'm sorry. Um, I think I'll just not film in this mode again. I'm going to try and read it off camera, but um, I'm, I'm not going to... Looks like it says... You know what, I'm not even going to try and tell you what it says. I'll just spell it out to you. J-A-H-R-E. Uh, I'm just going to assume that's German. I'm just going to assume that's 50th anniversary again. J-A-H-R-E. I know I've got a couple of German subscribers, so could you tell me what that is? I'm, again, I'm guessing it's anniversary. But that's a nice little piece for the collection. Um, those are only four quid of Heine. And uh, not got a clue where that's made, most likely China. Now, the last one I have here, I know I'm cheating. This is not a Boker Plus. This is a Magnum by Boker, but I've only got one of those. And this is pretty much my entire Boker collection, Boker collection period. Um, I would like to get a genuine Boker, but um, never really had the money for it. There's just other knives that I've ended up grabbing when I did have the money to, to buy such a knife. Um, this is one of the very first fixed blades I ever got. I actually bought this along with the Glock field knife. How, how long ago? About six or so years ago, I think. Not really used that, just done it a wee bit whittling with it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think at the time I paid about thirty pound for it. I think they're up to about forty two now, but definitely a good little knife. And I do have a video on the channel of this knife, if you haven't already seen it. Although you'll have to do a bit of digging because that was about two years ago I posted that. So this is a really good knife for the money. You've got 
a genuine leather sheath which to me is holding up fairly well that said I've not actually been out with it um, this is the Magnum Lil Hiker by the way that's L-I-L Hiker I really am a big fan of this leather sheath it's, it's simple I know a lot of people hate these sort of sheaths or think the leather's crap um, I personally like it quite a bit the stitching is maybe not the best but nonetheless I think it's quite a nice looking sheath now if I put this on my belt and go camping with it I might change my mind but as of right now and as of the five or six or so years I've had this I absolutely love it it's a nice looking little knife so you've just got a little camp knife here essentially a little like three and a half inch fixed blade with a rat tang you can kind of see there Thin finish isn't perfect, that said, I think it's excellent for the price. Um, I've sharpened this quite a long time ago and never really used it. I put a bit of a mirror polish on the edge. Um, you can see there, Magnum, I'm sure it says Magnum by Boker. It does. 440 stainless, again I have done a video on this. And this is leather wrapped handle which I do quite like. Although it does get uncomfortable after a while but it's... For, for, for lack of better words, this is a cute little camp knife if you like um i see no reason why this wouldn't be a good option to take camping with you you're obviously not going to be beating on it because it's a rat tang once again but um for certain for certain whittling or you know mucking around in the shed making things camping fishing that sort of thing um i don't see why this would be a bad option maybe it's made in china but it seems fairly well made to me anyway that pretty much concludes this video. I hope you found it interesting. Like I said, I'm planning on doing more of these. I think I'll do the Zippos next. We'll see. Can't promise anything. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are. Feel free to leave any recommendations. I'll see you later.